Hello Geometry students and welcome back to another video lesson where we continue on with secants and tangent lines of a circle. Uh, today we're going to be looking at what happens when they intersect art outside of the circle or what about you know tangent lines that intersect the circle exactly once. So right now we've only got these three rules where uh, we have what's called that central angle, okay? The central, meaning if the arc is X, so is the angle at the center, okay? If the arc is X, so is the angle at the center. <clears throat> Here we've got the inscribed, meaning it sits on the edge of the circle, right? So the angle itself sits down here on the edge. If this is X out here, the angle down here is one half that arc measure. Okay, one half. Yesterday we learned an interior angle or an inside angle. All right, if this arc over here is X and this arc is Y, we take the average, right? So this angle here is going to be X plus Y divided by two. So those are the three rules that we have so far. Hopefully you understand them. Today we're gonna to introduce to you, well, what happens when they intersect outside the circle? How did they come up with 40 degrees when the opposite arc is 130 and we don't know this next arc in the line. So recall that this line BH and this line DG are called the secants and they now intersect outside of the circle. So look at where their intersection point actually lies. What that happens and what gives us then is a unique way to find the angle measure. We can take the larger arc minus the smaller arc and divide it by two to get the angle measure. The larger arc minus the smaller arc or the one closer equals divided by two. So it's a minus sign instead of adding. So in this problem, if we look at filling this in, right, the larger arc was 130 minus the smaller arc, which we don't know, divided by two would have to equal the angle measure of 40. All right, so you take and subtract, divide it by two. So if I multiply by two, that means 130 minus some other arc measure has to equal 80. Well, 130 minus what is 80? We would get X equals 50 or this arc EF would have to equal 50. All right, but it's the arc minus the arc divided by two, arc minus arc divided by two gives us the angle measure. Well, let's see if you can't put that to practice on this example, okay? <laughs> they give us the larger arc again, we don't have this small arc, and now I don't even have the angle measure in here, right there. I don't have that angle measure. Instead, they give me the other angle to its linear pair, right? So if this large angle, oops, if this large angle here is 166, what does that make this interior angle? Well, linear pair has to be 180, so that means this interior angle right there would have to be 14 degrees. Okay, so that interior angle would have to be 14. See if you can use that information, 140 degrees, 14 degrees, 44 and 14 to find DE. All right, so it's going to be 44, take away arc DE, divided by the two angles, or the two arcs, will give us a value of 14 or 44 minus the arc DE would have to equal 28 or arc DE 
44 minus what number gives us 28? Well, hopefully you found that to be 16. So the arc DE would need to be 16 degrees. So I hope you understand when they're outside, you're subtracting the two arcs, dividing by two to get the angle measure. Now let's take a look at what happens with a tangent line. Remember, a tangent line intersects a circle at exactly one spot and is perpendicular to the radius or the diameter, right? So where the radius meets that point, it has created 90 degrees. And that's an important thing to remember with any tangent line because there's a unique relationship that happens then if we create a triangle. Okay, AT is a tangent line. It is a tangent line to the circle. And arc A to B is 50 degrees. We need to find ATC. We are looking for this angle down here with my green dot. If it's a tangent line in this triangle, right, that means this is a right angle. So we know that down there is 90 degrees. Now the second part that we come from, notice we've got a central angle right here. Let me outline it in red kind of, and I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger so that we can see it, right? But there's that central angle. What is the arc for that central angle? The arc is 50, therefore the angle needs to be 50. So now I have three pieces, in a sense, three piece, two pieces of the triangle to help me find the third. 90, 50 leaves me with 140. And if I take that away from 180, we're left with 40 degrees for that last angle down there. 40 degrees. So as long as you have that interior arc measure of 50, we knew the central angle was 50 as well. See if you can't apply that to this one. What's the measure of angle CBA? All right. Again, AB is tangent, so that means this corner of the triangle is 90. If this arc is 63, so is the central angle. This is also 63, so 90 and 63 gives me 153. If I take that away from 180, that'll give us the remaining value for the last angle of the triangle, or 27 degrees. Arc CB, or arc angle CBA would have had to have been 27 degrees. So now we've added on those two kind of two new rules, right? Where if if we have a tangent line, we know this is 90, and we hope we have a central angle. So use those two pieces to help you find the missing one. And if the two lines intersect outside, we're going to do arc minus the arc divided by 2 to get the angle measure. If you have any questions, please make sure that you reach out and let me know. I hope you've got those notes down. Otherwise, until next time, everyone, stay safe.